two seconds left. North Park leads by two points. Keith French blocks this shot and North Park continues its third consecutive championship game if they can win here tonight. We're at the Carver Center in Rock Island, Illinois for the sixth annual NCAA Division III Championship. ESPN is proud to bring you the championship game. It's Uppsala College, 25 and four, taking on a two-time defending champion, North Park College, 27 and three. Along with Dick Vitale, this is Paul Brown, set to bring you the championship game, and Dick, a game that has a lot of individual matchups. Well, it's gonna be an exciting game. You have Uppsala, the second leading team offensively in America with great firepower. They're led by a great creator, a little guy. Who said a little guy can't play in this game? Tiny Green, he's five foot five and he is a jet. He's a creator, he's an innovator, and he's a penetrator. You talk about North Park and you have to talk about the big guy. Six foot 10, he's the franchise, Michael Harper, the All-American who makes things go. But there are other components to this game. You talk about Uppsala, you have to talk about their great inside attack. Timberlake, they call him a Skywalker, and also Steve Keenan, their outstanding scorer. You talk about North Park, you have to talk about Modzell Greer and Michael Thomas, both over the 1,000 point mark. And Dick, the tournament experience belongs to North Park. Well, two major factors go to North Park. The fact that they've been here, they played for the goal, and also they got the big guy in the middle. But I'll tell you something, Uppsala, they got a bunch of gutty kids from New Jersey. They'll play with tremendous intensity and desire, and this is gonna be one hell of a classic. And we'll have the starting lineups for you in a moment here on ESPN. Livestock, I got cows, I got pigs, I got sheep, I got mules, I got all livestock. Well, they said, you all right, boy. You don't have to pay no toll. You can just go right on through. I thought that went great, didn't it? Good job. Back at Augustana College once again along with Dick Vitale. This is Paul Brown and Dick, you take a look at the team statistics. This could be a high scoring affair. Well, I'll tell you something. Uppsala has great firepower as indicated by 85.9, 89.1. You talk about North Park, they put 85.9 on a board and these teams can play. They have played against some of the Division I teams. In fact, if you look at Uppsala's record, Paul, it's amazing that three of their four losses have come to some really some solid uh, solid Division I basketball teams. And you know what? Coach Dan McCarroll told me, he said, hey coach, the coach of North Park, we can play with the big ones. We beat Jacksonville last year and they were in the NCAA. We played South Alabama to the wire. This is gonna be one heck of a basketball game, Paul. And we got a great crowd on hand here tonight at the Carver Center. A lot of people from North Park. I'll tell you, the last championship that was ever won by Uppsala on a national basis was in table tennis about 20 years ago. Their fans are all fired up. One of their prominent alumni who loves the school is here today, Ted Savarese. We got all the gold here today. We have the president of the university, the chairman of the board, all the brass is out for showtime. Well, showtime is about ready to get underway here. North Park 27-3 on the season. They got into the finals by beating Longwood 57-55. Let's go to PA announcer Mark Schaefer for the introductions. A 6'5 junior, number 31, 
Grant Grassdorf. And at forward for Uppsala, a 6'5 senior, number 25, Bill Timberlake. At the other forward position for North Park, a 6'6 junior, number 34, Jim Clausen. And at the other four position for Uppsala, a 6'7 sophomore, number 23, Steve Keenan. At center for North Park, a 6'10 senior, number 33, Michael Harper. And at center for Uppsala, a 6'6", six, six, senior, number 21, Bill Rudowitz. And at guard for North Park, a 6'7", six, senior, number 21, Modell Greer. And at the guard position for Uppsala, a 6'2", six, senior, number 12, Mike Bucker. And at the other guard position for North Park, a 6'1 junior, number 24, Michael Thomas. And at the other guard position for Uppsala, a 5'6 senior, number 10, Tiny Green. Uppsala is coached by Tom Chapman, and North Park is coached by Dan McCarroll. Just about set to get underway. As we mentioned, North Park earning the right to get into their opportunity for the third consecutive championship, beating Longwood. 57 to 55 will have the opening tip off in one moment. I'm sorry, I can't hear you in the heads. No. Yeah, that's I better. Hear you. Harper and Timberleg get ready to jump at center court at the sixth annual Division III NCAA basketball finals about ready to get underway here from Augustana College. And the tip is controlled by North Park. They're right in a zone defense right now. Uppsala has dropped into a 2-3. I, I imagine they'll collapse inside a great deal on a big guy, Harper. And looking for Harper down beneath, but they go out top again. To Thomas, he had 20 points in the semifinal game. Deflected out of bounds, and the Vikings of North Park. But Dick, we've got all kinds of Vikings. Uh, Uppsala is also the Vikings, and the home of Augustana is the Vikings. One thing for sure, a Vikings going to win here tonight. <laughs> Grassdorf across as North Park setting it up. They look for Harper. I'll tell you something, he drew us a crowd. The guy's like magnetism. Wherever he goes, the big guy, he's got three, four people around him. A key tonight is whether or not that North Park can keep the big guy out of foul trouble. Last night he only played 18 minutes, oh, Paul. Played 18 minutes of basketball. The ball goes inside, he flash posts. Look at that, four people around him. And the foul was on Rudovitz, his first. Rastorf going back down in the corner. They go to Harper, double-teamed. 
short and the rebound is controlled by Bill Rudovitz. And Tiny Green picked up by Uppsala. No score in the basketball game. Only 46 seconds into the contest. Turnover, number one for Uppsala. And North Park, 57 to 55 winner over Longwood last night. And Wittenberg beaten by Uppsala, 67 to 63. Still looking for the first basket of the night. Heine Green averages more than 10 assists per ball game. He's a magician with the basketball. The kid has got great court savvy. He can see the entire floor, and he's a great creator and penetrator. Shot from outside. Rebound goes to North Park. Rastor picking it off the boards. And Thomas to Greer. Back out to Thomas, picked up by Tiny Green. Back over to Grassdorf. Greer is their quarterback along with Thomas. Shot good. As Thomas hits from the outside, 20 points last night, and we got our first two, Dick Vitale. I really feel that Mike Thomas is the key to this basketball team as well as the big guy. He's a smooth, pure shooting guard, and before his career is over, he should be the all-time leading scorer in the history of North Park College. And we have a whistle, and a foul is going to be called. You know, it's really amazing when you talk about this North Park basketball team. They got three people in their lineup, Thomas, Modzell, Greer, and the big guy in the middle, Harper, who have all scored in excess of 1,000 points. And anytime you have that kind of firepower, you are for real. Well, Bid, uh, or pardon me, Bill Rudowitz picked up his second personal foul, and that brings uh, Strominger into the ball game. Two to nothing. North Park is out in front, and the shot, no good. Tip on the bottle by Clausen was no good. It's batted out of bounds. It goes to North Park. I'll tell you, you have to give credit defensively to Uppsala. They have forced Harper to take two really bad shots. They're going inside to him early, something they didn't do last night. Uh, Uppsala must minimize the number of times that he can shoot the basketball because ultimately he can really, really put points on a board as, a, you, know, as you look at his 1,800 career points. And Thomas to Grassdorf, back out on top again. Greer and Thomas to Clausen. Back over to Greer. They try to go baseline, picked off by Timberlake. They have changed defenses now, Upsala. They went to a 1-3-1 zone. They're going to be alternating their defenses, jamming inside. Set up now by Booker to Green. Green the quarterback. Back over to Booker. He's guarded by Greer. Nice move inside. No good. Follow is up, but it's good by Strominger. Good strong offensive rebound. Nobody sealed them off and blocked them out, and he went up for the sure two. And it's a two to two game with 17 11 remaining in the first half. Greer with the basketball for North Park. And we have a whistle and away from the play, a foul is going to be called. The Upsala kids are really playing intense and really with a lot of uh, uh, heart inside. They're giving away a lot of size to this basketball team. They go across the front 6'10", 6'7", and 6'7". But I'll tell you something, they're going to give every ounce of energy they have, and they got a lot of heart, the Uppsala kids. Strominger picked up his first personal third team foul on Uppsala. And Grestorf outside hitting. Grestorf on the season average, 8.6 at 6 points last night. That's a key basket because now that forces you to come out and play him a little bit. And that leaves the guy open inside uh, Harper. Tiny Green, guarded by Thomas, shot over Thomas. And the rebound to Clausen, slept out of his hands, followed by Green. One of the important things here, uh, Paul, uh, Upsala certainly uh, has to get the early lead. They got to get the lead so that they can be in command and uh, create a situation where they can force North Park to continually play a man-to-man. -man. And Dick, uh, you talk to people, some say Upsala, ups others say Upsala. It's Upsala. I'm from out that area. I grew up out there. In fact, I went to a school, Seton Hall University, about five minutes away from Upsala, out we'll, in South Orange, New Jersey. We'll talk a little bit about your college career, which ended in 1962. I understand. Grastor from outside off the glass. No good. And trying to save it was uh, Booker before it went out of bounds. Coach McCarroll's early strategy right now. He wants to take the wing jump shot. He wants to, Grastorf to step into the gap, hopes that he hits that jump shot. So now it eliminates the double and triple team inside on Harper. The wings are open. Thomas to Harper, shot blocked. And a foul is called on Keenan. Good, strong basket. He went up. Here comes the lob inside. Here comes the lob. He goes up on a baseline. 
He pulls the ball back. Nothing there but a simple size factor. He had the extra three inches and was able to get the shot off. Upsala already is getting himself into a situation in team fouls to where North Park soon will be in a one-on-one -on -one situation, and that could be a key factor. And Harper's free throw effort is good. Here comes full court zone press with the 6'10 at the point. Forget it, this kid will go through it like you won't believe. He well, got banged there too, should have been a foul. And he was banged by Greer, the ball was kicked ahead. That tiny green, not happy with that call. Hey, I'll man. tell you something, I'm, I don't blame him. Little tiny uh, is a little upset, but uh, I don't want to get on the guys with the zebra shirts. Two fine Big Ten officials. We have Bob Showalter and Eric Harmon. They're two of the best in the Big Ten. And uh, but I'll tell you, the little guy got really beaten up there. It's seven to two. North Park is out in front. As Upsala now needing to get a basket here to get some feel and some momentum back. They're down by five, but we're only about five minutes into the game. Shot outside, and it's good by Timberlake. Timberlake getting his first two and now three-point lead, Dick. Timberlake's got great high school tradition out of New Jersey. He was an All-Stater at St. Anthony's under Bob Hurley, where they have great, great basketball teams. And on the turnover, Watch this. Up. Hollywood at it. Booker from Tiny. Good. Will it count? Yes. Excellent play. The creator, I call him, the little guy, Tiny Green, for all the young kids out there. Watch this magic man with the basketball. He throws the great bounce pass in a two-on-one situation. Here it comes. Look at that bounce pass. Fundamentally solid. Booker explodes to the basket. Great offensive first step. Booker played high school basketball in East Orange, New Jersey, where they had another guard by the name of Clyde DeGlide Bradshaw, who does his thing for the DePaul Blue Demons. And the free throw is no good by Booker. And the rebound now is controlled by North Park in a 7-6 game, 15-26, remaining here in the first half. Thomas is open outside. And the shot is good by Thomas. And that's four for him now. And a foul was called. There's a foul inside, banging the big guy. Uh, right now, I'll tell you something. You know, Thomas gets the two points, but I was a pretty good one-eyed shooter in my time. And if they gave me the wing jump shot like they're given, which they have to do, they got to make a decision. Do we play the guy on the wing or do we jam inside? Well, they've decided to jam, take away the 6'10's effectiveness, and let him shoot the shot. Hey, I'm excited about this game. This is great, great basketball. Timberlake uh, committed that last foul, his first. And the sixth on Upsala. The shot, no good. The tip bottle by Clausen, no good. Saved it. Nice effort by Clausen of North Park. The wings are open right here. Clausen's alone in the corner. And the rebound, high up on the board goes Timberlake to pull it down. Heine Green has a single game high of 19 assists, trying to go underneath, intended for Keenan, and it's picked back up by North Park. Thomas, back in the corner, Grasscourt. Grasscourt. They need a timeout, Uppsala needs a timeout, yeah, and they call it, they make me look like a genius again, huh? Thank you, Coach Chapman. Hey, Coach Chapman has done one heck of a job. The program was started by Richie Adubato, who is now coaching in the NBA. He planted the seed, but this guy has now put the finishing touches and has him here in the national finals. It is 11 to 6 with 14.38 remaining in the first half. And you talk about Uppsala. They have an eight-game winning streak right now. Let's go down to the huddle and see if we can pick up what's going on in the North Park coaching area. I don't know about that because we just had a book. The last time was a one-to-one. What we'll do is this. As the ball comes down, the floor start with Jimmy and Harp on the red squares and the two wings. If he slides, you stun high. You stun high either way. You see what I mean? Then it'll be easier to read what the back line's doing. So you're stunning into the 1-3-1. One, one. And if Mike reads a one guard, he'll just slide and you're still all set up. You see what I mean? Good board. All right, now hit that offensive board. Keep playing tough D. Let's go get it. And Coach Dan McCarroll is really impressive. You don't compile the record. They're going after their third NCAA championship. I don't care who you play against, Paul. Whenever you can put that kind of record together, you got great leadership from the top. You talk about that record, 15-plus uh, wins in 10 of the 13 years he had spent at North Park. And it's 11-6 game. And Tiny Green is setting it up now as a solid whistle and a foul is going to go against North Park. And that is on Clausen, and that is his first. They got to go inside and take advantage of their great inside attack of uh, Keenan and also of uh, uh, Mr. Timberlake and get them the ball down in the boxes and let them power layup it in. 
I think right now uh, the little guy is controlling the basketball just a little too much. Keenan in the lane, banked it off the glass, no good, and another foul is called, Dick. That's where you want the ball to go. That's where you win basketball games, you win them inside. That's high percentage area. Keenan has shot over 60% this year. He's an outstanding player. In fact, he only needs, he has to have a great, great game here tonight, but uh, he needs 34 points to break the all-time Uppsala school record. And Keenan, who had 11 points and seven rebounds in uh, the game against Wittenberg at the free throw line. And he missed that one. He's playing with the flu. I don't want to make excuses for the kid, but the kid right now is, has not felt really good the last two days. They told us that right before game time. They didn't want it to get out, of course. Uh, so North Park could not capitalize on that, but he is, as Dick mentioned, not at 100%. Here comes zone pressure, full court. It's 11 to seven, North Park out in front of uh, Uppsala. It's a diamond press, a trapping basketball. And it's and it paid off. Yes, it did on the turnover. It's picked up by Tiny Green. Tiny going baseline. Keenan with a shot. Yeah. That's where the ball's got to go, as I said a little earlier. Down inside. Here comes full court pressure again. Keenan now with a total of three. It's 11 to 9. Upsala's only down by two. French is in the game now. He had a big evening last night. We'll talk about that in the broadcast. Rastorf back over to Greer outside. Tough luck shot. Rebound. Thomas, no good. The follow. Harper up on the boards, and he commits the foul. He has a tendency to get in foul trouble. In fact, the last two nights in tournament play, he has been on a sideline more than on a floor. In fact, his team was in tremendous adversity yesterday, and they came back and won with him out. Here goes the shot. He climbs the back right here. He makes contact. Excellent call. No question. No doubt. Booker from the corner, no good. Rebound, Harper in and out of his hands. The follow is up and good by Tiny Green. Hey, the Valley of the Giants inside, and who comes up with the score? They list him at 5'6", but forget it. He's about 5'4", if he's lucky. But he's got a big heart, plays with a lot of emotion. Harper tried to go baseline, and it was blocked out of bounds. And a I'll tell you one thing, Harper's really active inside tonight. He's flashing to the ball, he wants the ball. He wants to close out his college career with three gold wristwatches. He doesn't want silver, and I don't blame him. Timberlake at the free throw line. It's 11 to 11 with 13.24 remaining. I'll tell you something, Paul, with the price of gold right now, can you blame him wanting to go? Look for zone pressure right here. I look for the big guy right now to trap on a baseline, and you know what? it'll be useless because the little kid will split the trap and go through it and create an opening on the other end of the floor for two. So if I was North Park, forget the press. Next one is up and good. Here also. it comes. Here right. it comes. Make me look like a star, Tiny Green. Dribble through it. Yeah, right there. Go ahead. Thank you. <laughs> Across the top line, set up by Tiny Green. We have fun doing the game. It's no doubt about that. Down the lane. Oh! Oh! Hollywood Slam Dunk USA! Skywalker, they call him. And you know why now, Paul. They call him the Skywalker. Here it comes. You take a look at this, baby. That's a dunk in any league. NBA, NCAA Division I. Yes, sir. Thank you. <laughs> Lucky the backboard is still up there, Dick. And he was fouled in the process. And the foul was on Keith French. I tell you, there was no doubt in his mind when he saw that lane, he was flying. First personal on French. And the fifth team foul on North Park, Uppsala with seven. I'll tell you something, they just exploded now at a big party in West Orange, New Jersey for John Hooper, a retiring athletic director after 23 years at Uppsala. Tonight they have his testimonial. And John, you have done a super job for the NCAA and for athletics. God bless you in whatever you do in life. Understand there's about 300 people at that They're celebration. They're screaming and yelling right now. Out in East Orange, New Jersey. Actually, I guess the celebration is in West Orange, New Jersey. That Where's was an excellent pass right there by uh, Michael Thomas. The kid didn't make the good catch, but it was an excellent attempt. Upsala's up by a point now, 14-13. That's Coach Chapman, and he is really a witty guy, and he's done a beautiful job leading the Upsala team to the finals. Heenan and Tiny Green, along with Booker, Timberlake, and... Uh, Schominger, that is Keenan, and it's good. You can never allow a guy to post up inside and play behind him. They have to front Keenan inside, or you might as well just light up the two on a board. 16-13, a 
Sama died three points. Greer to Thomas. Rastorf, along with French and Harper, out of the court. 20 footer, nicely down. An excellent player out of Proviso East High School, where they have the greatest high school player in America right now, Glenn Rivers, who's heading for Marquette University. A total of eight points already for Michael Thomas. And it's a 16-15 game. And a turnover by the Vikings of Uppsala. On the way back, bounce pass from Greer to French, turnover for North Park. If this gets into a transition up and down the floor, I give the advantage to Uppsala. If it gets into a half court, five against five, you gotta give the advantage to the size, the experience, and to the play inside of Harper. We got ourselves a war here. This game is going for the money to the wire. 12 minutes remaining in the first half, 16 to 15. Tiny Green, another turnover. Turnover on both ends of the court. And we now show 11.57 or in the first half. Tiny gets a little careless at times. He has a tendency to play a little bit out of control, but he's a thoroughbred little guard at this level of competition. Grassdorf to Thomas, back over to Grassdorf. High arching shot, good. Grassdorf now with a total of six. Excellent ball reversal. He stepped into the seam of the zone. The seam is open because of the presence of the big fella, and he put himself down to. Man to man as it's set up. Try to go baseline to Keenan. Nice effort by Clausen as he goes down on the floor, and he slapped it out of bounds. That's what you like to see, Dick, that kind of an effort. Well, there's a great effort here. I tell you something, Paul. If you're not going to play with total dedication and a super effort tonight, you might as well lock the sneakers, hang them up, take the uniform, and never put it on. North Park leading by a point. Booker over Greer. That no shot. Poor shot. Coach Chapman's upset, and I don't blame him. Thomas looking baseline. Greer in the lane, traveling. North Park is trying to force the action a little bit. And they got to settle down. They lost a little of their poise and composure. That's made them really a national champion. And Tiny Green, the quarterback, setting it up. Going down the lane. Left-handed shot. Rebound to Harper. Thomas moving with Greer. Holds up. No good. Keenan high for the rebound. Here's Tiny against Harper. What a pass. Up. Booker, no good. Tipped by Booker, good. Excellent pass. He made a good reverse spin dribble. He caught the trailer in the transition game, dumped it back, and up we went for two. There's Harper, turnaround jumper. Flossen trying to save it. Let's take, let's take a look at the action. At the other goes. end and the block. He finds the trailer, excellent pass. He goes up for the shot, no good by Booker. Here comes the offensive tip, counted for two. But the creator made the play, Tiny Green. And he has the ball for Uppsala, who leads by a point. Keenan, shot, no good at the rebound to Grafstorf. Double team by Keenan and Timberlake. Keenan's very active tonight. I'll tell you something. If he's sick the last two nights, I'd hate to see him when he's well. Boston now for North Park. They're zoning inside. They're doubling up on a big fella, and those jump shots are open. Harper off the glass. Whistle. Foul is called on Keenan. Nobody blocked out the big uh, center, Michael Harper. You must block him out automatically every time a ball is released and goes to the glass. Get a look at Keenan's second personal foul of the game. There goes the shot. Nobody seals off Harper. He's got an open lane. Makes the good offensive rebound. Should not have put it on the floor. Should have taken it right to the goal. He fades, but he draws the foul and is going to the line. Oh, how beautiful it is to be six foot ten. Dick, for the first time in his career, he's gone to contact. He used to wear glasses. Is that a big transition? Well, he's just getting used to him. I understand he just started playing uh, with the contacts. I know uh, Bob Lanier, who I coached in the NBA, wears contacts, and I'll tell you something, he sees the rim pretty well. He's a great shooter. He did his thing for St. Bonaventure University. So does Harper, who averages 21 points a game. Here comes the full court zone press, which will not bother Tiny Green at all. Kid made an error there. He could run the baseline. After a score, after a score, you can run the baseline. 10 minutes, two seconds remaining in the first half. It's 19-18, North Park. They want to get it in Green's hands, and he'll split the trap. Keenan bringing it across in the pass from Tiny Green. They're zoning now. 
North Park has changed defensively from the man-to-man -man and they're in a zone. I think it's a very smart move. They can protect the big guy, keep him out of foul trouble, and also Green is not what I would call a perimeter jump shooter. Heenan in the lane. Draws iron, but no basket. Fast break the other way, broken up by Green. Picked up by Keenan on the lead to Booker. Booker. Rebound to Thomas. Potential three on one. Greer to Clawson. Good. Greer's an outstanding player. Lonzo Greer, he's an outstanding player. He made the right play. He was in transition. He had a guy on his right, guy on his left. Looked one way and found the open man. Lawson gets his first two of the night. It's 21-18 with nine minutes for Medica in the first half. They're changing defenses. They're back in the man-to-man. -man. And the bank shot is good by Keenan. Let's take a look at the fast break. Here comes Thomas over the Mozell Greer. He looks right, kicks it left. Excellent play by the 6-7 guard. Back to live action. Grastorf shot, no good. Greer in the lane. Lawson to Grastorf. Slapped away from behind by Tiny Green. Nick, you're high on that little guy, aren't you? Tiny well, Green. I just love his excitement he creates. Uh, basketball, he has some deficiencies. His range is limited, and also he plays a little out of control at times. Harper with a shot. It was blocked by Booker, but he fouled him. I'll tell you something. Every time Harper gets near, near the basketball, there are three Vikings who are attacking him. I'll tell you something. It's like a shark going after somebody, boy. Really, they're after them like you can't believe. Mike Booker committing his first foul. He's out of East Orange, New Jersey. Booker played in a great high school team out of East Orange, coached by Bob Lester, uh, one of the real blue chip coaches in the state of New Jersey. I was teasing Dan McCarroll earlier because yesterday he was telling me how he'd like to play a fine little Catholic school in uh, uh, Chicago by the name of DePaul University, since they're from Chicago. And I know there's a school out in about five minutes from Uppsala that plays some great Division I basketball headed by Billy Raftery, my alma mater, where I graduated in 62, Seton Hall University. Pony Pirates, are you ready? Tom Chapman told me he wants a battle. He wants to play the Division I Pirates opening game next year anywhere they want to play. Harper unsuccessful with his free throw attempts. The score remains 21-20. If I'm Billy Raftery and Ray Meyer, I say forget it. Stay and play the Division Ones. Another new substitution in the ball game now. As it's set up, Upsala down by a point. 90 green. Oh, oh what a backdoor cut. Keenan. Excellent backdoor cut. Executed by the play. Two-man basketball. Tiny green to Keenan. For his ninth, perfect. ninth point of the night. 22-21, a 10 remaining first half. Lawson, double team, Harper, nicely done. Harper's really active and is flashing to the basketball. He's hungry to want to close out with that W here tonight, and he wants to stay in the basketball game. They're Seven. playing man to man right now. Seven points for Harper. And it's 23 22. Timberlake. Tipped by Keenan, no good. Rebound, turn around. The shot, no good by Rudovitz. Whistle it, and we had a foul called underneath. That's going against Michael Harper. You notice uh, people probably want to wonder how come you get some great, great scoring uh, teams like North Park, Uppsala, and get to the finals, and they don't put a lot of points on a board, you know, as indicated by their great scoring averages. Well, it's one simple reason. You got equal talent going against each other, and they're really banging, playing with a lot of intensity. They have a tendency to play a little conservative because there's so much at stake, and that affects the scoreboard. Bill Rodowitz makes the free throw from North Arlington, New Jersey. He's a quiet player. He's a kid that you don't hear a heck of a lot about, but he really utilizes his body. He banks people around. He makes things happen inside, and he gives away three, four inches every night he goes to war. Up some up by a point with 7.38. Remedic in the first half. Rastor, height advantage over Tiny Green to Thomas. Greer in the corner. Got to it. Greer now with a total of two. Lonzo Greer hit the open baseline jump shot. He's able to get that shot off with no problem because his great size, 6'7". Here goes a little four-corner attack. They're in a man-to-man, -man and they want to open up the floor. They don't believe anybody can play Tiny Green, and I don't believe as many guys in Division I will come out and check this little guy if they had to play him head-to-head. -head. Smart strategy by Coach Chapman right now. He knows he's the heavy underdog. He's playing against the two-time national champs. He wants to use some clock and also create some one-on-one -on -one opportunities. Rudowitz with the ball. 
Dick, I thought it was kind of interesting last night uh, when Coach uh, Tom Chapman was hollering at his team. They were down by four points. Tiny Green came over to you and said, hey, Dick, tell the coach I got everything under control. We're only down by four. He's got a great deal of confidence. <laughs> uh, he's just a beautiful little guy. I happen to know him. I worked at a clinic at Uppsala College, and these kids really, uh, it was a day with Dick Vitale and Richie Adubato, and we put these kids through drills, and they really responded. And I'll tell you something, they're workers, and that's why they're winners. Rudowitz, shot good. Did and not walk. Excellent call by the official. Great first step. I'll tell you, he made a super explosive first step, squared up and shot the jumper. For his fourth point of the night. Rear in the corner. Whistle he got fouled. Foul is called. And it's going to go against uh, Timberlake, his third personal. And we have 6.07 remaining in the first half. And it's up solid leading North Park. 26-25. As I said last night, Paul, uh, you know, uh, you've got a team like North Park who's been there, who's won two years in a row to a national championship. They sort of uh, exemplify the philosophy of John Wooden that they sort of play, you know, not to lose rather than to win. They play a little conservative. They're a little tense at the moment. They know everybody's gunning for them. But I'll tell you, when the night is all said and done, as last night, it's a funny thing. Their numbers came out a little bit higher than Longwood, and that was one heck of a basketball game. And Marcel Greer, a three-time all-conference player, making the free throw. Fourth point of the night, 27-26, North Park by one. Tiny Green, rebound is controlled by French to Thomas. Thomas. He's a smooth player, as I said earlier. Six foot one junior. He's got good range. He has great vision of the floor. Michael Thomas is going to have himself a blue chip career uh, and also a senior year next year. And he's already in double figures with 10. All alone underneath. Partially blocked. Came back out. Rudowitz got rejected by Frank. Well, he's done that more than once in this tournament. And uh, Thomas tried to go underneath the French and on the line. Getting the ball was Keston, but he was out of bounds. French was the difference last night coming off the bench. He gave him great, great play off the bench. Here's the shot block right now. He takes it up, and here comes French out of nowhere. He says, thank you, get it out of here. And then look at him take the lane. Gets hustling on both sides of the floor. He gives North Park the edge because of a little bit more flexibility with their bench. They have a little bit more depth than uh, Uppsala. And Groot's in the game for North Park for his first time tonight. And French on the follow, and Harper was there as well. Whistle and a foul is called on. It's going to go against Harper. That's his third, Dick. It's a shame. The kid uh, constantly is in foul trouble, but it was a good call. He climbed the back, and he has to come out right now. Dick, as you get a look at it again, what do you do to a young man when he's prone to get into foul trouble all the time? Here he is, climbing the back. Uh, Paul, in this situation, I want my players to be aggressive and to be active. And as long as he's committing fouls due to the fact that he's hustling and he's aggressive, Hey, really, uh, those things are going to happen. More times than not, he's going to come out on the plus side. Rudowitz at the free throw line. He had five points and six rebounds last night. Yeah, every night you'll talk about Tiny Green and you'll talk about Michael Harper and Modzell Greers, but it's kids like the Rudowitz and the Grassdorfs that make it happen also. They're the little parts of that component, that engine that makes it go. Two for two from the line. That'll improve that percentage of 60 from the line a little bit. 29-28. North Park out in front. They try to go underneath the French. Banked it home. I'll tell you, he's an excellent Division III kid coming off the bench. He can start with many teams in America. First two of the night for French, who had 12 points last night. Rudowitz baseline. Good. Hey, Rudowitz is making a star out of him here tonight. He's got eight points already. Yes, well, you know, he's getting open. They don't have the respect, I guess, uh, for the kid like they do for the other people, but they better start getting some. And Thomas traveled as he tried to put a move on Richard Caston. One thing right now I know for sure that uh, Uppsala can't afford to get themselves into a situation where they got to play man-to-man -man because uh, we'll have an m and -er. We'll have a mismatcher down inside where Thomas will go to the boxes and post the little guy uh, green to death. Four minutes, 37 seconds. We're to get the first half. It's been close all the way here in the first half. As Tiny Green guarded by Thomas. Root coming out to pick him up. They go to Keenan back to Green. Look for Keenan to post right now. He'll post inside. They're going to try to get the ball to Keenan. He should have had the ball right there. Caston looking inside. Shot taken by Largy. 
And it was partially blocked in a traveling violation. He's a football player. He plays football at Uppsala Largy. Came place, off the bench. Place kicker, Dick. Yeah, he can kick that little pigskin. I don't know too much about the pigskin. I have a tough enough time learning about the leather basketball. Your total sports cable network continues to bring you the NCAA's March of Champions. Join us for the Division II Gymnastics Championships from Davis, California on Monday, March 31st at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Illinois Chicago Circle tries for its third straight national title and ESPN will be there when the championship is crowned. All right, I want Let's coach Chapman in the hall. Get it back down three, you get a red shot. If we go behind the stick, you gotta punch it in. He's earning his money. Look at him. He's earning every dollar he's getting. I would have loved to have heard you in a huddle, Coach. I'll tell you this. Genius <laughs> is 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration. And these two coaches are perspiring like you can't believe. Hey, that's part of my speeches. I get paid extra for that stuff. Getting that plug in there for the speeches. I saw a nice brochure that you got out. Groot bounce pass to Thomas. And underneath, Greer. Give the assist to Claussen and the basket to Greer. Greer's a very flexible player. He started the game on a perimeter playing guard at 6'7". Harper's on the sideline, and now he's playing on the interior. 33-30. Back in a man-to-man. Aston to Rudovitz. Back out top. Look for them to try and catch Keenan posted inside. There he is, right there. Keenan. Thank you, Mr. Keenan. Hey, that guy that's doing the color knows a little basketball, you know that? I'll tell you something, what a call. <laughs> My man Kenton and uh, George don't give me any credit at all in a truck. Here goes the ball, reversed. Good ball reversal, he finds the open man. There's Keenan down in the boxes and he's murder inside. He's got a nose to score. I can see why he's threatening for the all-time uh, record in uh, Uppsala's uh, history. And the kid's got uh, two more years, so I'm sure before his career's over, he's going to put a lot of points on the board. French committing the foul that sends Keenan to the line. French number two on him personally. And the free throw as no good, and Groot comes down with a rebound. Scott Groot out of Buffalo Grove, Illinois. They're still in their zone. As I said earlier, would have an m and a mismatch if they had to play man. You can't leave him open all the time, Dick, or he's going to burn you. I'll tell you, he rises to the occasion. Yesterday also, Harper got in foul trouble. He had to make a big play. He made it. Anytime he has to show, he's an All-American uh, also. Tiny Green to Keenan. It's 35-32, 3-10. We're to get a first half. In the lane, Keenan. Rebound to Thomas. And North Park with an opportunity to extend the three-point lead. Root pulls up. Boston on the follow. Great left-handed tip. Open lane to the basket. He finds the open lane. He goes in. Nobody blocks him out. This is a big possession right here. They're down five. They're minus five up Salah. They got to get two here to get it to three. Or it can come back up to seven. And Tiny Green. They're opening the court trying to create a one-on-one -on -one situation so he could find Keenan down inside. I'll tell you, if I was defending against Tiny Green, I'd play about six feet off him. I'd let him do all the dribbling he wants, but I would not allow him to penetrate. Took the words right out of my mouth, Coach. I was just going to ask you what you do. And that's what Dan McCarroll's doing. Look how far they're playing off him. That's a very, very smart strategy. Let him play with the ball all he wants out here. We're up five. That's right. Plus, it's using time on the clock, which now shows 2.07 remaining in the first half. 37-32. Caston now. Guarded by Thomas, Caston, had it slapped away nicely. And North Park picks it up on the turnover. Smart play also, backing it out. Very, very well coached basketball team. Greer, French on the bottom, good. Yes, oh, it's out. Are hurt. The last two baskets scored, the last two goals have been on offensive rebounds. They got to do it, do something to neutralize it. There's only one thing you do, you block out. Fundamental, basic, but you block out. Here it is, shot goes up, in the hole. 
Rudowitz committing the third personal foul on him. French with an opportunity for a three-point play. Absala's not blocking out right now and it's creating problems. They need a timeout and they get one. Good timeout. In the third place game in this, the sixth annual Division Three championships, it was Wittenberg over Longwood at overtime, 48-47. Boy, but what a dandy it was. Mike Vanette of Wittenberg made a basket with about uh, 10 seconds left in the game. And Joe Raymar of Longwood hit a 20-foot jumper with two seconds left in the game to send it into overtime. And then uh, Dick Vitale, they had a controversial call sending uh, Brian Egler to the free throw line just before the buzzer at the end of the overtime, and he made the free throw. Well, he attempted a desperate 30-foot jump shot at the buzzer. Uh, Coach Ron Bash, uh, he wanted to come on a year because he had some choice words from the Longwood uh, School in Virginia. He was very upset with the officiating, and that's typical when a coach loses. I know I went through that also. Are you a swimmer? I that's can't swim a lick. Your total sports cable network continues to bring you the NCAA's March of Champions. Join us for the Division III Swimming Championships from Washington and Jefferson College in Washington, Pennsylvania. The date is Monday, March 31st at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time as John Hopkins tries for a fourth consecutive title here on ESPN. I tell you what was fitting about the first game. It was one on a foul line, on a foul shot by Brian Agler, the first team All-American Division III for Wittenberg. And what a way to close out his collegiate career. French converts the three-point play, and it's now 40 to 32. Here comes full court zone pressure. It's just to change tempo a little bit. It's to try and create a little bit of a problem for Uppsala and getting into their offensive scheme of things. It's like token pressure. They haven't had much trouble with it at all. Tiny Green and his club down by eight points now with 1.30 remaining in the first half. Captain and Green. They've been really effective since Harper's been out of there. It's really amazing. I guess they're so used to playing without him. He's in so much foul trouble lately that these kids just rally. Well, and I tell you, when you have a sixth man on the bench like French, that makes a difference too, Coach. Yes, he can play. As I said, he can start for a lot of people. He's a very active player. And uh, there's an example of why, as he rejected that Plays shot. on both sides of the floor. Tiny Green shot's no good. It was tipped out by Clausen, cleared by Thomas. What a pass. On the lead to Cruz. What a great pass. And a walk. Should have had a walk. Yes, he does. Excellent call. Hats off to Eric Harmon. It was an excellent call in transition. He took the extra step. Walk in violation, no doubt about it. And Coach Tom uh, Chapman just came past us and made the sign of the cross. Look at this. I'll tell you what's amazing right here. You know who blocked the shot on the other end? A guy by the name of Keith French. You know who slam dunked that? A guy by the name of Keith French. Utilizing the whole 94 feet of that court. And a shot was blocked and it went out of bounds. Again, underneath French, Greer, Lawson. They're setting up a special out of bounds play. That's a look at second year head coach Tom Chapman, who just appeared on your screen. Keenan trying to go baseline, offensive foul. Number three on Keenan. Well, they got Sky Walker sitting on the sideline. Uh, Mr. Phil Timberlake with three. They have now uh, Keenan with three. Harper's in foul trouble down at the other end, so I guess it balances it out. And Joe Mc takes the ball, lowers the shoulder. No doubt about it, he squared up. He made contact with his right shoulder. The defensive player planted his feet, was there, and it was an offensive foul. Referees are doing a heck of a job, they really are, and I'm not just saying that, I have no reason. I'll tell it like it is if I didn't think. Tell it like it is, I don't want to start talking about that other guy. What's his name, tells it like it is. <laughs> with it is French. McGarvey is in now. They're going for one shot, very smart strategy, a motion game, they got a lot of cutting action. Look for them to spring someone for the layup. There it is. Group. Thank you. Should have made it, though. And almost taken away by Thomas. That was a big possession. If they can get a score here, they can get it to six rather than be down ten. Caston dead. There it is. That was a big offensive possession. His first two of the night, the first half, is over. And at the end of one half of this, the sixth annual NCAA Division Three championship game, it's North Park with 40 and up Sada with 34. And we'll be back with more here on ESPN, your total cable sports network, right after we take this timeout. 
great job. It's working well. Oh, it went super. It really did. I'll tell you, it went super. Your interview coming up? I don't know. Uh, what am I doing now? When do I do the interview? On the floor. Okay. ESPN. Back at the McCarver Center at Rock Island, Illinois once again, along uh, with Dick Vitale. I'm Paul Brown here at Augustana College. And in the championship game at the half, it's North Park leading Uppsala 40 to 34. And Dick, uh, by no means or stretch of the imagination, is this ball game over with. No, not at all. Not with Uppsala and the gutty kids they have. Uh, right now they're a little bit in foul trouble with their great inside game. Uh, Timberlake and also Keenan, two of their top scorers, sitting on the sideline with three. But also on the other end of the floor, you have the 6'10 franchise, Michael Harper. He got his third again. The kid's been in foul trouble the entire tournament. This team knows how to win Dan McCarroll's North Park basketball team. They really, really have great poise and composure down the stretch. I look for North Park to pull it out. However, however, I've been wrong before, number one. And Uppsala has, like I said, some other people that can play also on the floor. Well, Dick, uh, no matter what happens in this game, you've got to give a lot of credit to both teams. Uh, Upsana coming in with a 25-4 and four record. They have not lost to a Division III school this year. On the other hand, North Park, 27-3. They've had an outstanding season, losing only to Chicago State, Milliken, and Augustana. I'll, I'll tell you, any time you put those kind of numbers on a board, you have some people that can play. When you talk about, you're talking about North Park, they got that dynamic trio I talk about who has put 4,000 points between them, Michael Thomas, Modzell Greer, and also Michael Harper. And they've also competed against Division Ones. They beat the University of San Diego. They beat the University of California, Irvine. Last year, they beat a solid, good Jacksonville team. This team can play. They can play with a lot of people. They have some good people off the bench, as we've seen in Keith French, but Uppsala, Upsala didn't score 88 points a game in second in the nation with Miras. They got some shooters, some outstanding players also. Dick, very quickly, do you expect any changes second half? Well, I think, number one, uh, they got to utilize uh, Timberlake and Keenan and get them the ball down in the boxes, even though they have three fouls. Coach uh, Chapman's got to forget it, got to get the ball down inside, and they got to control the little guy a little more. Tiny Green has got to learn to play a little bit under control. We're going to take a break here and send you to the main studios of ESPN, and we'll be back after this timeout. Back at Augustana College at Rock Island, Illinois, it's halftime in the championship game. And the Vikings of North Park out in front of Upsana by six. Let's go courtside for an interview now with Dick Vitale. Dick? Welcome to halftime. My name's Dick Vitale. My guest is Ralph McMillan, the assistant uh, special D events director with the NCAA. Ralph, uh, welcome here tonight. Uh, give us a little insight as to the three classifications and the determining factors in getting uh, classified. Okay, Division One and Division Two teams give athletic aid based on ability, i.e. an athletic scholarship. Division Three is based on need. Everything that the student athlete receives is based on the need that he shows through his parents and background. It's not based on ability. That's the main difference between Division One and Two and Division Three. What about the history of Division Three? Give us some uh, insight into some of the schools that compete and have been successful in the Division Three competition. Well, of course, most of the fans tonight are seeing the most successful team in Division Three, North Park, which is a two-time champion and going for their unprecedented third. We started in 1975, Dick, at Reading, Pennsylvania, 
and we had Scranton University was one of the early champions. The, the third place team tonight, Wittenberg was a champion in 1977. Those are just a few of the teams that have been here. Of course, we're so new, we don't have a very long list to work from. I'll tell you, Ralph, I'm so impressed with the caliber of play. It's unbelievable, and the exposure that they're getting now, I think it's gonna just be great for NCAA Division III schools. I agree with you 100%. That's the thing that we're so excited about within the NCAA, to have our Division III championships and the Division III student-athletes exposed to national television, to be able to have the people view them and see really what type of competition goes on at this level. Well, I'll tell you, some of these kids can play with Division I people. There's no doubt about it. In fact, I pointed out earlier, you got a school like North Park who went down to Jacksonville, Florida last year and beat an NCAA team down there. Ralph, I want to welcome you here. I want to thank you for being with us. And the NCAA, hats off to you guys for doing a super job. This is a first-class tournament. Thank you. We're very pleased to have ESPN doing this championship. And again, we're just very excited. And we appreciate you, Dick and everything you're doing for Division Three. Thank you very much, and we'll go back to Paul Brown with more halftime. Okay, thank you, Dick, and it is halftime with the score. North Park leading Upsala 40 to 34. This is your Total Cable Sports Network, ESPN. Got any stats, Jim? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thirty seconds. How did the interview go? Twenty seconds. Where the stats? Where the stats? Back at the Carver Center, once again, it's halftime. And North Park leads Upsana 40 to 34. Dick, the first half stats. Well, you look here at the first half stats, I've always believed that one of the key factors, uh, field goal percentage. Both teams are shooting identical 44.4. Uh, two more attempts by North Park. Both these clubs have shot in excess of 50% during the course of the year. You also look down here at the free throws, 80% uh, for North Park, 60 uh, 6.7, and uh, Uppsala College has an excellent free throw shooting team. Turnovers are equal. Really what it gets down to is one basic factor, offensive rebounding. They are not blocking out Uppsala. They've allowed too many easy baskets off the offensive glass, and you cannot permit that if you're going to expect to get out of here with a victory. 32 teams began the playoffs back on February 28th to earn the right here to play in the championship game. And recapping the winners, 1975, it was Lemoyne Owen of Tennessee. 1976, Scranton of Pennsylvania was the winner. In 1977, it was Wittenberg, the champion. The first time the tournament was held here at Augustana. And since 1977, the tournament has been here. In 1978 and 79, you've heard us say it before, North Park, the two-time winner. Just about set to get underway with the last uh, 20 minutes in talking about Uppsala. Dick, uh, kind of an interesting story here before we get underway. Ron Hoffman is the radio play-by-play -play man for Uppsala. They had some plane problems in Chicago and uh, they wound up having to get here late, late and Jake Shade, the SID, did play-by-play -play on the radio for the first time in his life last night and said he had a ball. He had a blast doing it, huh? Everybody loves to get into the media world. Now we got another guy to compete with. Tell him to stay away from it. <laughs> well, thank goodness Ron Hoffman's all right and he's here tonight. And we're underway with the second half and it's 40 to 34. North Park out in front. Greer opens the second half. Lawson. There's the offensive rebound. Again, they get the second shot. They cannot allow that to happen, but it's easier said than done. This club really bangs and goes to that glass. And Uppsala does not block out, and unfortunately, that could be their downfall tonight. Could be their water load. Could be their Achilles tendon. Greer to Grassdorf to Thomas. Air ball. 
So now Upsala with an opportunity to cut that six point deficit. Green to Booker. Just underway in the second half. They gotta get a little bit of basketball play out of Michael Booker, who's a much better player than he played in the first half. Uh, he's their second leading scorer, 15.1. He was a very quiet player. Rudowitz and the, the rebound half. to Gratzdorf. North Park looking for that third straight championship. The only other basketball team in the history of the NCAA. UCLA to do it. Shot foul by Rudowitz, the basket by Harper. They played behind Harper inside. He flashed to the basketball. He made a good flash post move, went up, got the basketball, turned, and utilized his size to shoot it over the smaller guy inside and got himself two and is going to the free throw line. And Dick, that's four fouls on Rudowitz. Rebound is controlled by Thomas. They have Rudowitz, Timberlake, and uh, also uh, Keenan in foul trouble. Their whole front line there, the whole baseline trio is uh, sitting themselves uh, in trouble. If I were uh, North Park, they got to go inside right now. I'll tell you one thing. I would like to see this basketball team play together with French and uh, Harper on the floor at the same time. They're pretty good with uh, both of them not being on the floor at the same time. Who am I to question Dan McCarroll? He's there a winner, and I'm sitting here a fired coach. I'm only teasing, but I was axed. Add with it. Up underneath. It's good by Greer. Montel Greer made an excellent offensive move to the basket. And he's now good in play. 10 points on the night. And a 10-point lead, as a matter of fact, for North Park. They're staying man-to-man. -man. Matchups you got inside. Keenan hooked up with Clausen. They got to reverse the ball a little bit more. Swing it around a little quicker. And look to dump it inside. Dick, this is really a pivotal part of the game here, isn't it? Yes, it is. These next four minutes are very crucial. If you can get away from them, become a, a, a real catch-up affair, and they'll be really, really in trouble. they got to get themselves a score or two. Excellent timeout. Talking about the Division Three ratings, North Park ranked number one in the final poll that came up. Wittenberg was number four, Uppsala number five, and Longwood number 12 in that final poll. And uh, maybe we can go into a huddle now and see if we can pick up with Tom Chapman and what's happening, or are we going over to the other huddle? Let's go to the North Park huddle. He was coach of the year last year. Defense is the key. Defense is the key. Good ball movement. Let's go. Take charge. He made two important points in that timeout. Number one, he talked about ball movement, which I just mentioned is a problem and dilemma here for Uppsala. And number two, he talked about defensive play. You know, champions, really, in any sport, you talk about baseball, you talk about football, basketball, it starts with good, solid team defensive play. Not individual defense, but great team defense. You put all the individual defensive players together, and they help each other. They give a helping hand, and that's what this club does here. They really play excellent team defense. Timberlake. And a foul is going to be called on Grassdorf of North Park. Timberlake was just a step too quick there for Grassdorf, and he got himself to get the foul. His second of the night. And on the common foul, the ball will be turned over to Uppsala. They are from East Orange, New Jersey, with a record of 25 and 4 heading into this contest. Timberlake. Over Clausen. Not a good shot. Rebound to Clausen. Not a shot you want to take when your club's down on a minus 10. Thomas tried to go underneath, and it was kicked, and it will be given to North Park. We're down to 17.35 remaining here in the second half. They need the big play up solid. They need a big transition basket, a slam dunk of something, something to get them going. Right now, maybe here they come flying up the floor. There's a young man that can do it. Back out to Rudowitz. Tiny Green. His real name is uh, Alonia. He prefers to be called Tiny. That's Rudowitz. Ball's That's through. what you call a feathery touch. Soft as an egg. 10 points now for Rudowitz. Tiny Green harassing uh, Thomas a little bit. 
Slapped out of bounds. Toddy said, hey, it went off Thomas. But Maybe they could pick the tempo up a little bit and start pressuring, uh, extend the floor, and Upsala can get a little bit more tempo that way. That's Thomas. There's the oh. offensive boards. Greer with the follow, no good. I hate to keep repeating myself, but that's the name of the game. Offensive baskets. There's Booker. And Nick, oh, there's a change where they didn't convert on the basket. And Upsala goes down and makes two more. That's a four-point change. Instead of being down 10, you're down six, and it's anybody's game with 16 and change on a clock. 44-38. Greer in the corner. Greer, can he save it? What yes. a play. Nicely. To That's Harper. Good desire. On First the and 10. Yes, sir. Blow the whistle. We got a foul down there in the corner. And Harper went down on the floor and uh, also going down was uh, Rudowitz. I'll tell you, it's so great to see the All-American 6'10 diving for a loose ball. Look at this play by Montel Greer. He flips it back. Dangerous play, though, because he's flipping it blindsided under the basket where Upsala with a great play there and he doesn't see the floor. It can be turned into a conversion or two. But and it's a great effort. I'll never knock effort. And Dick, the fourth foul on Harper. It's, a, it's really sad to see a kid draw his fourth foul. I know it's not sad to Coach Chapman. He's smiling. But it's sad to see a kid get his fourth foul. 6'10", you know, dirtying up his knees, diving on the floor, hustling for a basket. 16-22, remaining in the sixth annual NCAA Division III Championship. From Rock Island, Illinois, Dick Vitale and Paul Brown. North Park and Uppsala in the championship game. North Park out in front. And Rudowitz tried to put a move inside of North Park, and he traveled with the ball. He lifted his pivot foot. There's Harper. He's sitting as frustrated on the sideline. I tell you, that's one rule I can't tolerate is the disqualification rule. If there's one rule I'd like to see changed in basketball is that a player is not disqualified. That's my man, Thomas. Michael Thomas from outside. That's 23-foot range. He can shoot it from 23. To, to really rehash that again is I really would like to see that rule. Basketball is the only sport where a player is penalized and disqualified from a contest. You don't get it in baseball and football. And traveling on the turnover is called Booker and Green. And let's see if we can pick up the traveling call. No, I didn't see it. North Park with the ball. They're back in the zone now, 1-3-1 one, one zone. 46-38. It's very tough to block out on a shot out of a zone because you're not playing a specific man. You're playing an area of the floor, wide open. What an excellent pass. Cross into French. Nice combination, Dick Vitale. That's what you call team play. I know I uh, practiced the other day. They talked about the team concept. They talked about each guy having a roll on a floor. That's unselfish basketball. He goes up. He fakes the shot. He drills the pass down inside. Solid basketball, winning basketball. Good indication why they're two-time champions. That's championship-style play. 14-54 remaining second half. Green in the lane, Tiny with a shot, and the rebound to Quasson. He was looking up court for Grassdorf, but couldn't get him the ball. He's got to convert those. He's seven feet from the basket. you got to put those little ones down. And Richard uh, Caston ready to check in as uh, North Park losing French over one of the photographers. Kasten gave him some solid play last night coming off the bench. They fell behind last night. He gave him 11 big points. He's an outstanding free throw shooter. He was seven for eight on a free throw line last night. So maybe he'll give him a little offense. Uh, Booker, maybe he'll talk to him a little bit and get Michael back in the game and do the things that he's been doing all year because the kid's an outstanding talent. 48-38, 14-29 remaining in the Division Three championship game. Turnaround shot, and it's good. Nice move on the part of Bill Rudowitz. His okay, ball he, point. He's not afraid inside. He gets the basketball. He knows what to do with it when he gets his hands on it. Lawson shuffling it to Grassdorf. Nice play, but uh, no conversion on the layup. And a foul call. That's going against Grassdorf, his third. It was an offensive foul. He made contact. Defensive player was planted. Here comes the excellent pass. It's kicked down to Grassdorf. He explodes for the goal. He squares his body, Keenum. He had position. Excellent well, job of our people in the truck. Good crew here this weekend, Dick. Artie Green.
We're down to 13.50 remaining in the second half. It's 48 to 40, North Park out in front of Uppsala. And uh, Uppsala now can cut the deficit. Turn around, Rudovich. Shot, no good. Tipped by Timberlake. Rebound to Greer. Thomas. High arching shot. Timberlake. Back the other way we go. Tiny Green. Maybe we can get a slam dunk from Timberlake inside. There he is, strong on a box. He is strong in here. Got to make those count. They're getting some good shots, but they're not converting. Up and down the other way. Here's Greer. Shot, no good. Rebound is cleared. Well, let's go back the other way. Get the hands of the little guy. Rudowitz. Rudowitz nice. says, no, Tiny Green. I can handle it, too. And he gives a little show of himself, a little shake and bake time. 14th point of the night for Rudowitz. He looked like a fullback running to 32 off, off center. Rastor outside to Thomas. And the rebound to Greer, rejected by Keenan. What a foul call. There's the offensive glass again. What a flexible player. He has tremendous flexibility, Modzel Greer. I'll tell you something. I think the kid's a pro prospect. I think that some people are going to start looking at him. I know there's a lot of NBA scouts here tonight. Good offensive rebound. He goes up strong. He hooks his arm. He looks over at the sideline at the scraces. On me, coach? I can't believe it. I happen to know Timberlake. No question about it, Philip. You grabbed him. You hooked him. And going to the line to shoot is going to be Mozell Greer. What a career he's had. He scored over 1,500 points in his career. He's played on two national championship teams, attempting to get his third. Solid player, plays inside, outside. Has great flexibility, plays on both sides of the floor. Intelligent player. Three-time all-conference player in the College Conference of Illinois and Wisconsin. That is where North Park plays. Here comes the Diamond Zone Press. Diamond is simply a 1-2, a 1-1 one, one, one zone. They got their monster man up front, their safety man deep. Two attackers on the wings. They try to pinch and trap the basketball, but you're not trapping the little guy. That's his asset. That's Keenan in the lane. He banked it off the glass. He has a great knack for getting that shot up. I know a lot of people who are looking for the offensive foul there, but Keenan makes his living doing that. That's his bread and butter, taking the ball to the basket. Here's the pass from Caston inside. He puts it on the floor, he takes it to the goal. Should have been an offensive foul. Men in zebra shirts, you are wrong there, but I won't mention your name. When you make a great call, I'll mention your name. I'm good tonight. Dick, and that's a pivotal part of the game because if it had gone the other way, Obviously, the two points wouldn't have counted. Now a three-point play, we and it's got a four-point deficit. A brand new basketball game. Four points, and it's a war time. Here's his own press now with Rudowitz at the point. Keenan with 14. Lawson Greer out of the court with Thomas Grassdorf and French. Again, Harper on the bench because of foul problems. 12 minutes, 24 seconds for betting in the championship game. Grassdorf. He's really Eight. effective tonight, Grassdorf. He's making his presence felt. He's getting that 15-foot shot on the wing as the wing areas happen to be open. Eight points for Grassdorf. And a whistle and away from the ball. Foul was called. And that's going to be signaled against Keenan. That's the fourth foul on Keenan. And that's their number one scorer. Their inside power, Keenan and Timberlake, both have four. And that is a dilemma. Coach Chapman knows he's confronted with a dilemma. There's two uh, strategies right now. Number one, you can take the kid out, save him for the end, or you can leave him on the floor, zone up, and try to protect him. I think with two having four fouls, I would leave one of them on the floor. He's got to leave Keenan out there. If he fouls out, you got to come back with Timberlake. North Park, Dick, with four team fouls of Sala with three here in the second half. 11.49 remaining, and it's 51.45. Against the zone defenses, they use a great, what I call, zigzag action. Anytime the ball gets into the gut of the zone, they bring it to the weak side. They bring it to this off side of the floor. There it is right there, reversing that basketball. Look for them to get the open wing jump shot. They're going to swing it to Modzell Greer for the open wing jump shot. Let's see if you're right here, Coach. Very patient. Playing with a lot of poise and patience right now. He had it right there and didn't want to shoot it. Didn't look for the shot. 11 minutes, 12 seconds. Oh, what a high. Oh, there's the stuff shot. That's called high percentage basketball. 
That's high percentage in any league. Goes into the high post. His turns, looks down, high-low action. Up he goes, slam dunk time. Keenan with a shot at the other end, no foul called. Chapman wants the foul, Coach Chapman, he's screaming. Technical. We got a technical foul here. And on uh, the coaching staff of Uppsala, they are over at the bench saying, who's that foul on? Who's the technical on? I don't know, I, I can't see those kind of calls. I really can't. Maybe uh, being a coach, I stick with the coaching fraternity with my, my brothers. We stick together, but uh, I just, you know, my feeling is this. The great, great officials, they're in control of the game. There's no need to slap a technical. No warning was made. He stood up. He, he didn't really curse. He didn't say anything. He's right in front of our bench, and I really don't believe that a game should be controlled on a technical. ESPN's day begins and ends in the ESPN Sports Center. Sports Center brings you a minimum of three 30-minute shows each day. More on weekends, packed full of the latest scores, highlights, and interviews. In addition, you'll continually be updated on all the late-breaking sports bulletins. Sports Center is the most comprehensive sports news program on television, and it's yours exclusively on your total sports cable network, ESPN. I know the guys at the Stripe Shirts do a great job. I really mean it. I don't want to sound like any critic. But I just think a national championship play, a technical, let the kids win it on a floor, let them lose it on a floor. A technical like that can break a game open. You got an eight-point game, he shoots two, get possession of the basketball, that's a four-point play, and, and I just don't think it's called for him. Because like I said, the great official comes over and he says, hey, Chapman, the next time you get up, big fella, it's going to be tea time. And the next time, you're walking the streets of Rock Island, Illinois. And the technical will be taken here by Thomas. It is 53-45. North Park out in front, and the free throw's up, and it is good. Dick, I want to get this out of the way so we don't forget it. Special thanks to Ed Wittenberg of Wittenberg College, Dennis Prickle of North Park, Hoke Curry of Longwood, and Jake Shade of Uppsala for all of their help. The sports information directors, gentlemen, thank you very much. 10 minutes, 42 seconds remaining in the second half, 54-45. Dick, why didn't he shoot two foul shots there? It must have been called on a player then, and I'm in error. He did not call it on a bench. He must have heard something from a player because then it's a one-shot technical. Nice, nice back door. Greer missed the bunny shot. I think he might have called that on Keenan, and I apologize to the man with the striped shirts, but I still didn't see any reason for calling it, but he knows better. Father knows best. Shot, no good by Rudowitz, and a whistle and a foul called underneath, and that's going against Strominger picks up the foul, his second, number 20 for Uppsala College. Uppsala only has one more timeout left also, and he got 10 minutes left in this game, which can be a crucial factor if they can get it down to make it a real game and get it down to a wire. Those timeouts become vital, but coach had to use them. 54-45, rear in the baseline. Such an intelligent player. He knows when to post people up when he's got a mismatch size-wise. He knows when to play from the perimeter and shoot the jump shot. Very cool, calm, and collective. Gets 13. the job done. 13 now for Greer. Tiny, the land of the Giants, put up the shot. Whistle and a foul is going to be called. And Timberlake is going to head into the basketball game for Uppsala. And uh, Michael Thomas picked up the foul, his first. Most situations, that lane opens up. He's down the lane. He's got the layup. But against this competition here tonight, they close it up like you can't believe. And they force him to take an off-balance shot. Fortunately, he drew the foul. Well, they've won it two consecutive times. I'll Dennis. tell you what they're trying to show there, don't you? They're trying to show in Chicago that they're number one and that the poor blue demons of Ray Meyer are number two. Ray Meyer, I love you. He's an institution. He's a giant as a coach. But these kids at North Park are trying to get some recognition. Maybe the Chicago Tribune and uh, papers out there can start to recognize and give them some front page coverage. They deserve it. Hey, am I opinionated? I'll tell you something. Wow, Dick Vitale, calm down. <laughs> Stay the way you are. It's 56-47. You mentioned uh, the Chicago newspapers. Sports Illustrated is also here this weekend. 
Give us some coverage to the Division Three Championships. That's one way to draw the coverage. Excellent two-man play. What a pass from Lonzo Greer inside to Keith French. Two-man basketball executed to perfection. A la any kind of major Division One NBA level super play. And a Tiny Green in around and out on the That's top. a Hail Mary shot. You pray on that one. Three on two. Thomas with Gratzdorf and Claussen. Good by Thomas. 13 now for Thomas. He pulled up under control, shot the 17-footer, had two wing people covered, and he converted. Nick, I think the North Park fans can feel it here now. The sixth man has been in effect all night. You know, the sixth man, they got these fans here rocking this place, it's sitting in the aisles here at August Standard. This is really, really exciting. I think they're showing why they're a championship team now. There is no question who the better basketball team right now is. And a traveling violation is called on Thomas. I'll tell you the one thing, when Harper goes out of the basketball game, and he's a great talent and a great player, especially at the NCAA Division III level, but this team has a little bit more quickness when he's out of there, and that French kid, I can't say enough about him. I'll tell you, he's an all-tournament selection, and he's a sixth man. No, don't bring that in here. He's laughing French. He said, hey, he can't be serious. Five foot six, one to shoot that baby in here. Tiny Green said, what did I say? Look at little guy. He's got a heart of gold, and I love you, Tiny. He takes it in, all those six eights, six sevens. He sees the big fella French. French starts laughing now as he sprints out. Green is second personal. Here's Greer. Tough luck shot. Timberlake with a rebound. Timberlake, 14 feet out. The worst thing in basketball has happened right now. Every one of the Uppsala players are trying to do it by themselves to get their team back in this basketball game. Thomas for two more. Use this last time out, or we're going to have a route. He's got to use that last time out, or we'll have a route. And listen to the crowd here at the Augustana College. 15 points, and I believe they tried to get a timeout, but they couldn't hear the whistle, Dick. I'll tell you, he quieted them down a little bit there, down low inside, put the ball on a box, and Keenan was really effective. He reminds me inside, I mean, not on the level of Nick Workman, who led the NCAA in scoring when he played out at Seton Hall University, but he was an inside player, a garbage man who moved actively without the ball, and Keenan is sort of on that style of play. But if Nick Workman's listening, Nick, I know you did it against the Giants in Division I. And Crossett is coming out of the game. Boy, the sound in here is unbelievable. Hey, you can have Market Square, Indiana, no question Indianapolis, the Final Four, Division One. You can have your NIT championships at Madison Square Garden, but to these kids here tonight from Uppsala and also from North Park, this is what it's all about. They've had their dreams, they couldn't sleep last night, and I'll tell you something, they're putting a show on. 62-50, Thomas in the lane. Tiny Green. Oh, what, what a move. move. Excellent move down the lane. Excellent front change. Takes it down the lane and scores. Look at him digging in. Giving every ounce of energy he has. Well, it's 10 points, but there's still seven minutes left. Harper, turnaround jumper. The two-time All-American hitting from outside. Not only two-time All-American, he also won the MVP two years in a row, but I don't think he's going to get the MVP of the tournament. This year. Look at that pass. Keenan, bounce pass inside. Beautifully done to Strominger. The last three minutes, we have seen clinic basketball. Excellent backdoor cut, sharp bounce pass. I love that kind of basketball. 6.40 remaining in regulation time. Grassdorf, they're shooting the eyes out of it now, coach. Grassdorf's been really a difference here tonight. We know about the Modzell Greers and the Michael Thomases, but he's a plus whatever he can give. Coach Showalter's warning Coach Chapman to let him sit down a little, but uh, he's not really upset. Your Total Sports Cable Network continues to bring you the NCAA's March of Champions. Join us for the Division II Gymnastics Championships from Davis, California, on Monday, March 31st, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time. While were you reading that promo, Mazel went up to the sky to see the Lord. He was so high. There's Thomas. Plays really under control, Michael Thomas. There he is on a proviso east, 
out of Illinois, one of the thoroughbred high schools in the state of Illinois. 17 points. Green, left-handed shot. Beautiful spin and move toward the basket by Green. Well, they're playing a lot of one-on-one -on -one right now, and they're all trying to do it themselves. In the last, from the eight-minute mark down, they tried to catch up too soon, and that put them into a real, real jam. All the way, Green. Showtime, Buddy Green, you can do it, I can do better. And they throw it out of bounds right in front of us. Our papers go flying. Listen to the crowd, Coach. Here comes Tiny Green, gives a little crossover step. He spins 360 style, he explodes. Up he goes, five foot five, right in there with the six tenors. Thank you, put two on a board, light them up. <laughs> you are something else, Coach. Let's go in to the huddle right now and listen to Tom Chapman. to 56 trap. 56, we go man to man, full court. When they get it over, we go six, and we got a trap, and we gotta, we gotta rotate, okay? We gotta trap and rotate, all right? On right, offense, We're gonna you double gotta up pass the board. ball to somebody, then take it to the hole, all right? Pass the ball to somebody and take it to the hole. 56, Come on. Come on. no timeouts, Brad. No timeouts, Brad. Outstanding young coach, has done a brilliant job, and his strategy there is excellent. His team's in a hole, they're down 14 to the champions, to the team that's won it two years in a row, heading for their third. But I'll tell you something, they'll never quit. We always believe that a quitter never wins, and a winner never quits, and this team will not quit. They have no more timeouts up, Sala, either, uh, Paul. Five minutes, 37 seconds remaining. It is 70 to 56, a 14 point lead. And it's set up by Greer, baseline to Grasdorf, up and good. And a foul was called. Grasdorf with a 14 point lead, he's not too worried about the foul. He just wants to know, he looked over to the score, are you gonna give me the two in a book? I want the two. I'll tell you, John Hooper, who is retired out of Uppsala, I know all the Uppsala fans back in New Jersey had his testimonial right now. who are watching at the, uh, I guess, the manor or the town and country of West Orange, New Jersey. I know they're a little disappointed, but their hearts should go out to these kids and to John Hooper, all the luck in the world in whatever he does because he was a great coach, Paul, who maybe a win record doesn't show it, but he gave every ounce as a coach and did a super job in his 23 years at Uppsala College. Also athletic director, too, so he had double duty. And we hope everybody out east is having a good time despite the game because they certainly can be proud of Uppsala College. The Vikings, 25 and 4 heading into this game. 72 57. Still time left, Coach Vikings. Okay, there's another school, the University of Scranton. Unbelievable. Uh, they could have made a run for all the gold. They lost their top player, Irv Johnson, and they've been a perennial Division III championship quality team. And uh, to Irv Johnson, the All-American who fractured his ankle out in the regionals, uh, we wish you a speedy recovery. Harper baseline, Greer with the rebound. And North Park, 72-58. French had the shot, didn't take it. They're playing French and Harper together now, and they got quite a dyna dynamite duo inside. Good inside action with those two people. Well, you got your wish, Coach. They're in there at the same time. It's the first time I've seen Michael Harper, and he has some excellent potential for a basketball player. He, uh, they say, has made tremendous improvement. It's 72-58. And a whistle and a foul is going to be called, and that's going against Uppsala. And Tiny Green picking it up his third. Four minutes, 32 seconds remaining in the second half. An eight-game winning streak on the line for Uppsala. Six in a row for North Park. Last team to beat him, Augustana, right here in this building. Now North Park in playoff competition, 14 and all. Oh, he feels it tonight. Smooth jump shot, good post action. They split off the post. He has two options, and he finds the open man. Nice spin down the lane. A little bit, little bit late. Might, have, might be coming just a little bit late, finding the net. They're running, jumping a little bit here. Ala Dean Smith out of North Carolina, he was the creator of this. 
And Harper, baseline, getting another one. The players are smiling. They know they've got it now, Dick. Well, they smell the roses. And anytime you can smell the roses, that brings smiles to your faces. Green, no good. Keenan, follow, getting two more. I'll tell you something, Paul. I got my MVP. I don't know if it's going to be what the people are going to vote. But right now, Harper won it two years in a row. But my most valuable player goes to Keith French. That's who's my man. They wouldn't be here tonight if it wasn't for French. And running a close second will be Michael Thomas, who's been smooth and has just done the job. Montel Greer, 17 points. There goes Green again, nicely done. Moving inside on the right-handed layup for his 12th point of the night. He made a good crossover move and he used his right hand. He's a strong left-handed player and he used his right hand right there. 78-64. He hasn't stopped hustling. Those kids from Uppsala are still digging in. Dick, I gotta go along with you on French, on the MVP. Well, thank you, I'm glad somebody agrees with me. <laughs> That's unbelievable. I think a kid came in a tournament as a sixth man. He has a chance to win the MVP. We'll know in a little while. Here's Timberlake. Too much one-on-one -on -one basketball. Should have passed the ball off. Poor move. And the follow is up, and it is good by Schominger getting the basket for his sixth point of the night. Some of these kids will be wearing a uniform on a college level the last time in their career. And I'll tell you something, they can go out, all of them, mighty proud. They got here where a lot of kids dream of getting to the national finals. Anytime, you know, this is March Madness right now, Paul. All over America, you have March Madness in the high school level, the college level. This is what it's all about. Basketball fever, excitement and enthusiasm. And Harper missed on the baseline jumper, went out of bounds, and it will be turned over. And that brings unhappiness on the part of the fans of North Park. Dick, you mentioned uh, tournament uh, the month of March, March Madness. When you're in the Quad Cities here, you get it from both sides, from Iowa and Illinois. Right, I know the borderline right here, Davenport, Iowa. Look at a standing ovation. Standing ovation for some of the North Park players. I'll tell you, when Harper comes out and the seniors, Montel Greer, you're gonna hit this place really rock and roll. He's not picking the ball up, he's trying to save some time, but that's a, that's a five second violation. Right there, you have five seconds to make contact with the basketball once it's placed in play. Tiny Green did not pick the ball up in time. It was thrown in before the five seconds were counted off, but he must have the ball in his hands, and that's a five second violation. Eric Harmon, the official right on it case, Bob Showalter, both Big Ten officials doing a good job. And Grassdorf for North Park. Only two minutes away from their third consecutive NCAA three division crown. We have a whistle and a foul is gonna be called underneath. And that is on Rudowitz. And on him that is five personal fouls. He's congr congratulating a great act of sportsmanship, running over to the sideline, tapping all the kids on his back. He played a real, real gutty game and deserves a hand. And he receives it. A standard ovation he's getting from all the Chicago fans also from North Park. Because of his gesture of sportsmanship, and that's what college athletics is all about. Dick, I just want to take an opportunity to say thanks to a couple of other people, especially to Jim McGrath, the SID at Augustana College, who is uh, just unbelievable in his help to us, along with the other sports information directors, to Billy Martin. Not the Billy Martin, but Bill Martin keeping statistics for us. Thank you. Well, that Billy Martin you got here sitting on your right, at least he's not going to get fired again like the other guy working with Finley out in Oakland. <laughs> he's going to get it again. He knows it. He'll join me soon. And thank you to Jules Wynn of ESPN, to George Smith helping out, and uh, also Kent Samuel. And uh, Dick, believe me, in all honesty, thank you for the opportunity of working with you. It was a lot of fun here. Well, it's been really a lot of fun working with you, Paul, and I really uh, wish you... Uh, continued success in whatever you do. Dan Simmons also on our crew. Thank you for your help this weekend to Dan and to Bill Martin locally. I'll tell you, the city of Chicago has got to be mighty proud of the great basketball, Division Three, Division One. They had number one in the nation in both divisions. Uh, they got in Chicago their Mark McGuire's, but they also have their Modzell Greer's, their Keith French's, and their Michael Harper's also. Rudowitz went out of the ball game with 16 points. And Clausen, high arching free throw, bouncing twice off the rim, and it's picked up. And with it is uh, Kasten, Kasten all the way for two points. For him, a total of four. 79-68, North Park. 
is going to win their third consecutive NCAA third division crown. I'll tell you, Dan McCarroll's got to feel extremely proud. He's got to be really on cloud nine. He joins select company tonight. He joins the master, the wizard of West, Westwood, Mr. John Wooden. John Wooden won three consecutive NCAA championships on a basketball level. And right here tonight, we're seeing history really being made because now Coach McCarroll has done the same. And that's really, really, I'll tell you, really, really beautiful. And the sportsmanship demonstrated by the Uppsala players, Coach Chapman, and all the beautiful people of Uppsala can be so proud of their kids. Keenan had a total of 19 points in the basketball game as he goes out. And uh, Largy is coming in now for Uppsala College. The Vikings will finish the year 25 and 5. I'll tell you, I'll take that any year, any place, any league. Anytime you win 25 games, a super year. Well, I tell you, they were awesome offensively. They had some games where they scored over 100 points. I believe they did it four times. In fact, they beat Concordia College. Yet. I checked on this, 137 to 47. Hmm. Timberlake in the lane, shot. And a whistle as we have a couple of players and coach up in front of us, Tom Chapman. They also played Boston University, who was an NIT selection, right to the wire. They played the University of Richmond to the wire. They lost the three Division I basketball teams, so this team really, really has played solid basketball all year. Coach the Chapman and all his people can be mighty proud. I know the president of the university is here tonight, the chairman of the board at the university. Ted Savarese, one of their, I tell you, he's a diehard Uppsala fan. This guy is, lives and dies with Uppsala College, and he has done a super job in assisting uh, in the little way that he can and helping uh, uh, bring some excitement to Uppsala basketball. Their fourth loss of the year was to F Flagger at NAIA school, besides Boston University, University of Richmond and Niagara. Six games of 100 plus points on the year. And it's 79-68 as Coach Tom Chapman, now in his second year, said, I started the year at 190 pounds and a lot more hair. Now I'm much heavier and have less hair. He said he started at 6'4", and he was nice and thin. He shrunk to 5'10". He weighs about 280 now, he said. And that's what coaching can do to you. Coach of Longwood really added some humor here. He said, this is the North Park Invitational. He said, we're all Cinderella, but that club can play with anybody. There's Tiny Green. Tiny Green's not finished yet. He wants to get his statistics up a little bit more, and he's not quitting. He doesn't know what that scoreboard says. 80 to 70. Look at him digging in. Look at him scrapping. Not giving up. Excellent Love move. to see it, Dick. But an excellent move uh, in terms of breaking the press. They post up the big fella in the middle. This, uh oh, I thought we are going to get a slam dunk to finish it. Here's Caston in the lane. Should have made the pass out to Green. Clawson traveled with a basketball. Well, I'll tell you, Upsala has not given up Dick oh, Vitale. Not quit. These kids, you don't get to the finals of any national tournament and have quitters on your basketball team. And Coach Dan of Akira wants a timeout here. Kind of settle things down. Dick, what do you say at a huddle at this time? You're all choked up. You're on cloud nine. I know I had the opportunity in my coaching career to win several state championships, and to me, they were every bit as gold as someone winning a world championship, and that moment is just electrifying, and I know what he's feeling, and I also know what this guy's feeling, because I lost a couple down the wire. You don't have it. You want the ball, and you got to take it to the hall. The second thing you want to do is you want to try and draw the charge, fake the charge, okay? The third thing you want to do is you want to get the ball to 34, and you want to get give a foul to him to make sure it's a one-on-one, -on -one, okay? Not 24, but 34. You understand? Three things. Special for Larkin, all right? Try and draw the charge, and then after that we go, we foul 34. Come on, come on, come on, come on. 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 Come
of timeout, and I can tell you, a very important strategy takes place during those timeouts, and so many times you see coaches to where there's a little chaos, but Coach Chapman and Coach McCarroll, they got command. Right there, he had three specific assignments. He now wants them to carry out. I'll tell you something, he is an outstanding coach. Program was started by Richie Adubato, now coaching in the NBA, who did a great job at Uppsala, and he left it in great hands into this guy here, because Tom Chapman's gonna be hurt from. We are down to 46 seconds remaining in the Division Three championship game. You notice the praise I give the coaches. Why not? They've been to enjoy all the success. As soon as you lose, people forget about it. Bad shot. Poor shot and a bad shot. And a whistle and a foul is going to be called on Booker. It's a good foul. He wants to stop the clock immediately. Hopes they miss the free throw and get possession. So we'll walk it to the other end of the court where we'll have the free throw coming up in the third place game. The championship belongs to Wittenberg over Longwood 48-47. Wittenberg finishing the year 28 and 3. Longwood finishing the season 29 and 3. We're going to have some great interviews right after the game with the winning coach and some of the winning players and get their feelings on winning three national championships. And I'll tell you, you can go all over this country and you can fi can't find some kids that can claim right now this year that they have that in their hand and these kids have it. Three national championships. Underneath, in the land of the Giants, goes Tiny Gray. Look, look at him diving for the ball. Look at him hustling. 16 points. What an effort. And a whistle and a foul in the backcourt. And the clock has worked its way down to 25 seconds for Benig. And North Park, 80, Uppsala, 72. I'll tell you, a true championship team. When you talk about a team, I always break it down. T for togetherness, E for effort, A for attitude, and M for mental toughness. And that really summarizes the North Park basketball team. They truly are a national championship team in every area of the game, especially on this level. Coach, North Park's going to win Division Three. Who's going to win Division One? Uh, Division One. I'm going with the aircraft carrier. McGuire talks about the horse in the middle. Mr. Joe Barry Carroll closing out his career in super style and leading Lee Rose to the Nets to where it's going to be showtime, cut the Nets down, <laughs> dancing in the aisles all over. Yes, at Purdue University, they'll be dancing all over the aisles. 20 seconds remaining as we almost get a souvenir basketball. I want to say hats off also to Larry Brown and the UCLA basketball team really uh, showing a gutty performance and getting to the finals. I never thought in my life I'd say Cinderella for them. Michael Thomas, what a great hand. Great hand. Played a beautiful tournament. He's yeah. certainly got to be an all-tournament selection. I'm curious to find out right here. I'm on pins and needles. I want to see if we're accurate selecting Keith French as the uh, MVP. I mean, it'd be unbelievable to think a kid is a sixth man and could go home with a trophy saying I was the most valuable player in the tournament. Well, last night he scored the winning, winning basket, and then he turns around and he blocks the shot at the other end that could have tied it up. And tonight he was a major factor. Harper gets in foul trouble. You think that they're ready to roll over. It's over. French comes in, and you don't even know Harper's on the sideline. They're cheering, enjoy it, North Park, enjoy it, it's history. Here comes the hand, the All-American. There he goes to the sideline, six foot 10, hugging his coach, what it's all about, what an ovation. They're loving each other right now, that's pure love. Underneath, shot is up and it's good. 13 seconds for Benning, it's 81-74. And look at him, still diving, still scraping their knees. They cut the lead down to seven. They should have a heck of a banquet up at Uppsala, and all the people, the alumni, and all the fans should come out and support them at a gala affair, as I'm sure they're going to do with North Park. They deserve nothing but a first-class evening for the honor and the prestige that they've brought their schools. They've given their schools national exposure. People say, what does athletics do? All over America today, they're talking and hearing about Uppsala and North Park only because of right here in athletics, which has opened up that avenue and that door for that school. You know, it helps in dollars, fundraising. It helps in terms of enrollment. Nothing like it. Seven seconds remaining. Toddy Green from outside. The follow. The countdown. It's the shot. Celebrate the late time. Take the cats the down. NCAA Division Three champs, North Park.
only the second time in college basketball history that a team has won three consecutive championships. In Division I, it was the Bruins of UCLA. Now in Division Three, it's the Vikings of North Park winning by a final score of 83 to 76. We have a couple of interviews coming up that we think you'll enjoy, so please stick around. We'll be right back here on ESPN. Dick, you gotta go out front. Go ahead, go out, out front. front. Yeah, you go out. What do you want me go out front? Yeah. Huh? I got yeah, go I, out front. I got McCarroll and two of their players. Okay. I got Harper. Okay. He's going. Thomas is not French. Three to 76. The championship belongs to the Vikings of North Park as they won their third consecutive crown. Let's find out about it right now. Here's Dick Vitale with the Well, we coach. have Coach Dan McCarroll with me. Three national championships in a row, Coach. Oh. You got to be on cloud nine. I sure am. It's uh, God's been awful good to me to give me kids like that to coach. They're really wonderful guys. And They've really been a class bunch of guys to work with. I know you're a little choked up right now, and you have every right to be, yeah. Coach. I've been awfully impressed. I never really got a chance to see Division Three competition, but I'll tell you something. Your kids can play with a lot of Division I teams. Would you like to play that school down the road, the DePaul Blue Demons? Oh, DePaul's great in their own right. We're just happy to win this, and we've played some ones, but... Uh, DePaul's a, a great program. Ray Myers an idol of mine, so, so uh, we're just happy to be Division Three champs. I'll tell you this, Danny. Chicago's lucky to have two giants like you in a coaching profession. I know uh, you let Ray go out and get the Blue Chippers Aguirre, and you take whatever's left over, and I'll tell you, you put together quite a team, and you really are an outstanding coach. Well, thank you very much. Uh, coming from you, I really appreciate it. Well, Danny, lots of luck. What okay. does the future have for uh, North Park? Well, we have three starters back, including Michael Thomas and our two forwards, Clawson and Grandstorff. So well, you join John Wooden right now, and I'm going to tell you something right now also. This can't hurt recruiting too much. Back to you, Paul. We got like Coach wants to go with his team at the moment. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Okay, Dick, and you got a couple of other players, I think, that are going to be coming in there in a moment. And uh, we have received word that we may be wrong on our MVP selection. We'll get the right word on that in a moment, but it's 83 for North Park and a 76 score for Uppsala. Now let's go back again to Dick Vitale. Well, I'm surrounded by three dynamic players. I, four, I got another one behind me. I didn't see you hiding back there. What do you got to say about three national championships, Michael? <laughs> Great. <laughs> you know, with Proviso East, they talk about Glenn Rivers, the great high school player. But I'll tell you, Proviso East has got to be mighty proud of Michael Thomas also. I hope so. I had a good coach at Proviso East. What about your career here? I know next year you're going to miss playing with these guys. you got another year. Yeah, I'm going to miss it. but uh... <laughs> You're going to come back and break Harper's record. Michael, what about yourself right now? Where are you going to go, big fella? I don't know. Right now I'm looking for a job. <laughs> well, what about the pro basketball aspirations? Looking forward to going to a camp and being drafted? Yeah, the feelings are there, and I'm looking forward to doing it. And staying well, I'll it. tell you right here, also, what about yourself, big guy? You did a super job tonight. Thank you. This is the best way to end my career, I must say. Well, I tell you, it is a great way, Mazel. You can play. You really do a super job on both sides of the floor. I tell you, inside, outside, you're a flexible player, and you got yourself, I believe, a possibility of going to an NBA team and getting that chance to play. You like that? Yes, I love that, and I wouldn't like to make one thing clear. I have a lot of help with the things that I do. Otherwise, it wouldn't have came so far. Thank you. I want to say this, one other thing. Okay, in, in Chicago, they talk about the Blue Demons. They talk about Aguirre. They yeah. talk about the Paul. Would you like it, guys? Want to challenge them? I definitely. Uh, I'll tell you what. Go back in the streets of Chicago, play them for bragging rights in the playground, and show Aguirre and them that the Division Three kids can play too. All back right. to you, Paul. I'm causing all kinds of controversy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Well, I tell you what. There's only one 
Dick Vitale. And boy, I'll tell you, he's an outstanding individual and a guy that deserves special thanks for his help here this weekend. We'll be back, but right now let's take time out for this word. You are, you're unbelievable. You're unbelievable. I'll get it. About a minute. You got about 30 seconds. No. Do you want him to throw it? now with Tom Chapman of Uppsala who got in the finals. Tom, you're a young, bright coach. You did a super job. I know you got to be a little down right now. We're disappointed, but we got beat by a champion. And North Park deserves all the credit in the world. They won it three times. They deserve to win it. I'll tell you, Tom, you have nothing to be ashamed of. All the people of Uppsala should be mighty proud. And now we'll go back to Paul Brown with our wrap-up. Okay, Dick, thank you for your help on the broadcast. And we bid you a pleasant good evening. The championship belongs to North Park, 83 to 76 over Absada.